Hey, this is Papa Chubby here. Um, welcome to uh, Chubby Land Studios. This is where it all goes down, the mad scientist laboratory. This is where I've been working on my latest record that will be entitled Two Dogs for release on the Very Chords French label in uh, on October 27th, um, 2017. And the U.S. street date will be November 27th on Papa Chubby Productions. We'll be releasing it through the website and through CD Baby. Um, I put out a um, post yesterday asking people what they would like to know. And uh, I got a bunch of responses back. So um, I always like to put it in the hands of the fans, man. Um, so let's just, let's just uh, see what people are asking. First of all, the most obvious question that I've been asked... For the last 25 years, how did you get the name Papa Chubby? Okay, so let me just, once and for all, people, let me put this to rest. Well, actually, I wouldn't put it to rest because it's actually the opposite of rest. First of all, I want to say rest in peace Bernie Worrell because that's where the name came from. Bernie Worrell, the uh, genius of, of the synthesizer and uh, of keyboards, from Parliament Funkadelic was uh, jamming one day and I walked into the jam and he was singing a song called Papa Chubby, Papa Chubby and I went, wow, that's a great name for a band, Papa Chubby. So I thought, man, at the time I had just started my band and what I wanted was when people heard my music, I wanted them to feel like it was New Year's Eve. I wanted every night to be New Year's Eve. I wanted people to get excited. So I said, I'm going to call the band Pop a chubby to pop a chubby to achieve an erect penis and uh, that's the name of the band and people started calling me pop a chubby and I thought well at least they're not calling me an erect penis that you know, <laughs> could be a lot worse so anyway that's where that comes from we put that one to rest once and for all pop a chubby means to get a heart on so when you listen to my stuff I want you all to get excited man I always say there are no observers in a Papa Chubby show, only participants, man. We're going to get up and get on up and make it feel good. Blues for all the peoples all the time, man. One music, one love, yeah. All right, let's move on here. Do you have a favorite track, and if so, which one and why? Yes, I do. The, the most remarkable thing about this record for me, and also the most remarkable thing I found... I was just discussing with some with someone and telling them that no one is more surprised than me at my own success. Um, and what I mean by that is I'm not selling myself short. I know I'm pretty good at what I do, and I work hard, and I think I have special something special to offer. But it's um, the hits just keep on coming. That's all I can tell you. I wake up every morning with a song on my mind and on my lips. It just festers in my brain at night or germinates in my brain and um, sure enough one morning I came down here and I wanted coffee and I went to the kitchen and I only drink espresso I only drink Italian coffee Italian espresso made through a Vidietti pot you know the old uh, espresso pot man it's the only way to drink coffee man and I went and my coffee was empty I had no coffee so I sat down at the um, desk here and I looked out the window and the sun was on the hilltop and I moaned because I had no coffee and my dog Frankie in the other room thought I was crying so he cried because he hates to hear me cry so anyway the long and short of it I wrote this song called wound up getting high um, and one of the lines in is it morning rain morning sun up on a hilltop sounds like days goes by a big dog is barking in the kitchen he hates to hear me cry um, when I wrote this song I wanted to score it with a string quartet and my daughter Theodora is, uh, and this gets into another question later on, but she's a violinist. So I started picking her brain about string quartets, what's right, what's wrong, what's legal. And I wrote the string quartet and recorded it with volume swell guitars. The end result of this track this is an acoustic track, which is piano and guitar and vocals, and then a four-part string quartet done on volume swell guitar. And I really think it's something very unique and very original and I'm very proud of it so that's my favorite song on the new record I know you guys are gonna dig it I've previewed it on Facebook a couple of times and um, the um, 
people dug it. And that's what it's all about. I want people to dig what I do. Okay, here's another one. What do you listen to, both as inspiration and when you kick back and chill? It's pretty predictable, man. I mean, I, when I want to kick back and chill, there's two things that are going on my um, headphones, man. One is Bob Marley. Every time, man. Every time, man. Um, Little Axe is my favorite Bob Marley song. There are others, man. Um, you know, you put on Bob, man, and it was really just impeccable on every le level. The arrangements were impeccable. The play, it was rhythm and blues, man. I mean, these cats were playing rhythm and blues. There's so much inspiration, man. Um, Miles Davis, every time. I put on Kind of Blue. I can listen to that record forever, man. I really can. It's just such a remarkable record on every level, man. It's jazz, it's blues, it's what every musician should learn. Um, you know, just the um, the groove on on uh, on um, was it? He's just playing that triplet on the cymbal, man. Forever, it's great, man. Um, you know. And the other thing that really inspires me, and you, you guys might be surprised about this, is Prince. I've, you know, Prince in a way allows me to do what I do, which is I'm not, I don't just play blues. I love blues, I love blues rock, but I write songs and I write songs in different genres. And, um, you know, I was very inspired by Prince. Great loss, great tragedy. Um, and then, you know, I will put on some Freddie King and dig on that, man, all night long, or some old B.B. King, or, um, you know, Louis Jordan, stuff like that, man, uh, Louis Prima, uh, Frank Sinatra, man, you know, I like the swing stuff a lot, man, I really do, I like to swing heavy, and then, you know, I, my, my tastes go all over the place, because then I'll be listening to Motorhead the next day, so it's, um, it, it's, um, I always tell people, borrow from a lot of different sources. Here's a great question. Because this is what's really important. i got to put my shades on for this one. What's your sign? Aries, baby. I lead with my head. Right here, man. I've been butting my way through life for 57 years, man. Um, interesting. Okay, here we go. Here's another one. Let's see. What inspires and motivates you to continue making new music? This is an interesting question because, like I said earlier on, no one is more surprised at my success than me. I've been doing this for a long time. This will be my 36th studio record in 25 years, man. Um, for good, bad, or indifferent, I've been prolific. And I'm proud of myself for that because a writer should write and a musician should play and an artist should create. And that's what life as an artist should be, in my humble esteem. You could spend a lot of time telling your story, you know. I'm the greatest of all time. Nobody's better than me. Look at what I do. It's better than everything else that everybody else does. Bunch of bullshit. Um, just do what you do, man. I'm definitely from that uh, working class factory mentality when it comes to art, man. Um, Andy Warhol, people like Andy Warhol and... Jean-Michel Basquiat in the art world, um, Julian Schnabel were big influences on me. Um, in music, you know, people who just did it, man, like people, again, people like Prince, man, people like Jimi Hendrix, man, you know, look at the amount of work. I'm not saying that I can always attain brilliance or genius or that everything I do is good, but I like to keep on doing it and experiment again because with every experiment, you get better and a lot of what my records become comes out of that experimentation. The other part of that is I've been, somebody said, well, you're an auteur, and I didn't know what that meant because I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but it's really somebody who does it all themselves. And um, if you look at my studio here, there's my, I have a great little project studio. I'm really happy to have this place, man. Um, I just finished Two dogs. It's being mastered now, and um, I did everything myself. You know, I came up with the concepts for the songs. I worked out the arrangements. I recorded it. I engineered it. You know, most people when they make a record, 
they need a label and a producer and an engineer and blah 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 blah. The end result of that can be at the end is you don't know what you get, man. Um, I'm pretty happy with what I'm getting these days. It's pretty close to my soul, and that's that's I think a, a really uh, beautiful thing to be able to do that, man. Okay, okay. Ah, here's a good one. The future collaboration possibilities with your children. Well, let me tell you something. When my kid, I have, a lot of people know I have twin daughters, Theodore and Tipitina. When they were little, they used to come up on stage with me and my ex-wife, their mother, and sing, my bucket got a hole in it. And I used to think it was just the cutest thing in the world. And then, not too long ago, they told me they hated it. <laughs> like, Dad, when you made us go up on stage, you know, when I, they came up on stage at the Olympia in Paris, which is like, Carnegie Hall, right? And oh, Bucky got a hole in it. Um, they were like, that, but that really sucked, Dad. You know. But as adults, it's been kind of a different story. My my daughter Tipitina has been a contributor to my last couple of records, and on this one, I really wanted to have horns on a couple of the tracks. And I, um, I, I said, all right, man, I'll you know, I'll hire you. I want you to write the horn charts for these songs. And she wrote horns on uh, four of the tracks, man. Um, the best one, I think, is Pre-Existing Conditions, which is also my other favorite song on the record because it's really a satirical political commenter, g g uh, political commenting on the healthcare situation, man. Um, you know, it's... Um, the, the tagline is... Um, you know, I'm in a horrible position, I'm going to die of pre-existing conditions. And she wrote the horns on that, and it's, I think the track is stellar. Everything about that track came out exactly <clears throat> the way I wanted it to. It's rhythm and blues, man. It's heavy, the guitar is great, the arrangement's great. And she really nailed it. So, um, it's, it's great, you know, when uh, my kids are uh, musically talented and can offer something that I can't offer. It's nice, I hope we get a chance to do something more in the future. And, uh, you know, that's really cool. All right, let's keep going here. What is your live setup? That's an interesting question. What is my live setup? Well, I tour a lot. You know, um, when I worked with Tom Dowd, who everybody knows was one of the greatest recording engineers and producers in music history, he would say to me, a good engineer can go into any studio and make a great sounding record with any gear. That's a big statement, but it's true. You should be able to go into any room with anything and make it work. Having said that, as guitar players, we all like our little things. Guitar players can be crazy. They can drive themselves nuts. I need a million pedals. I need this pedal. I need that pedal. I'm going to do this modification, modification, that, blah, 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 blah. And at the end of the day, they don't know what the hell's going on, man. Um, I'm a vintage guy. A vin I'm, I have a vintage mentality. I love a vintage sound. My live rig right now revolves around Fender amps, black face Fenders, uh, 68 Fender Vibrolux, change the speakers to eminent speakers who I endorse, eminent little buddies, um, a deluxe reverb with a Celestion G12H in it, my 66 Strat with, um, a uh, JB in the bridge, and then I keep it really simple. I have four or five pedals, man. I've been using the um, <clears throat> Anniversary Tube Screamer, which is really good. I've been using a JHS Analog Delay, which I really like because it has a tap. I've been using a Quan Clone, which I really like because it gives you that extra oomph. Um, a Univibe pedal, and uh, Jimi Hendrix Wawa, and that's it. So five pedals, man. I like to keep it really simple, man. The tones in your fingers, the sounds in what you can get, man. And um, and you got to be flexible because when I'm touring, a lot of times I'm using rented amps, 65 twin reissue and Marshall JCM 8 uh, 900 with reverb. But you have to really the 90 percent of it's up here, man. And it's the same thing with monitors. Where if you get too monitor centric. You're never going to have a good show, man. You're always going to be miserable. you got to realize that the least important thing is your playing. The most important thing is what's in your heart 
and what the energy you convey to the people there. That's what touches people and what reaches people, man. So you really got to be careful you're not just playing for yourself, you know? Um, man, why two dogs? Why the, um, the, the title, Two Dogs, man? It's an old fable, um, Two Dogs, Two Wolves. The, the dog you feed is the dog that lives, and the dog you starve is um, the dog. I guess I'll read this right now. This is going to be on the record, but this kind of sums it up. Just give me a second here, Sean. Okay. In answer to your question, people ask me, why two dogs? It's an old fable. Two dogs, two wolves. We have become polarized as a race. There is a battle inside of each of us. As a race, I mean the human race. Each day we rise and must choose our path, calling upon each other and our own spirits for strength and courage. The dog we feed is the one that rules. The dog we starve dies of neglect. It is up to us to use our spirit to feed the dog that will enable us to thrive. I believe in the triumph of the human spirit. I believe that a grain of hope is more powerful than a mountain of fear and hate. And I believe in love. We are here to love, love each other, love the gift that is life, and love music. So, my dear friends, I make this offering to you with love, hope, and the awareness that the dog I feed is the one that help me, will help me to bring the love of my soul to you. And that's the concept behind this record, two dogs. Also, I have two dogs, <laughs> two big dogs. And um, <laughs> I'd bring them out right now, but they would be all over Joan, <laughs> jumping up and down and licking her camera, so uh, they don't know how big they are. But um, life is just a series of dogs, man, for me anyway. And life without dogs is not a very good life, man. So I wish you all uh, plenty of love, plenty of life, and, and uh, feed the right dog.